Hey y'all, it's Bridget the Museum Stitcher here on FlossTube, but also over on Instagram, Ravelry, and Goodreads, which you can find linked down below. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome period. This is my little corner of the internet where I talk about my crafting life, mostly about cross stitch today, mostly cross stitch, maybe a little bit of a book update. Um, I know I haven't talked about books in a while, uh, but that's because I haven't really been reading anything. So if you like crafty things, if you like reading, sewing, knitting, I hope you stick around, that you like and subscribe and leave me a comment down below uh, saying hi. <laughs> um, and if you're returning, welcome back. Today is Saturday, November 25th. I hope everyone had a great Thanksgiving who celebrates. And um, I've been stitching kind of like crazy, but also pretty monogamously for me um, since I talked to you last at the beginning of the month. And I've missed talking to you, so I'm hopping back on. I have no idea. I think it's maybe been two, two and a half, maybe three weeks. Um, but I felt like filming today. So uh, let's get into it, shall we? Okay, so today I have a previous finish feature. I have a finish, I have a few new starts, and then one whip that I've been working on. So we will go in that order. So today's previous finish feature is a half FFO that I finished this time last year. And this is Strutting Tom by Lindy Stitches. This was my Thanksgiving week start and finish of last year. I think I started it on Thanksgiving day and finished it on Black Friday. Uh, it is a cute little small. I stitched it on the called 432 count even weave with the called four flosses. Do you think we're mostly DMC? Uh, and then I actually bought this as a kit with all the finishing supplies and I just, have not finished the pillow yet, but that that is what all of this is, is the start of the pillow. Uh, I think I've got the backing fabric right here. Um, I just need to sew the chenille trim onto here and then actually turn it into a pillow. So it's a half FFO. I was hoping to have it done for Thanksgiving this year, but I have not had an FFO day in forever. I really need to sit down and fully finish some of my cross stitch finishes. So if you're unfamiliar with the term, FFO means to fully finish something, which is where you take your cross stitch that you finished and you turn it into something like a frame, like these guys back here, or like a pillow like this, or a drum like this one here. So I need to get this little guy FFO'd, but yeah. One year ago today, this is what I was working on or finishing up. So that's pretty cool. Okay, and then finish. So I have been working on this project almost exclusively, like at least a little bit every day, if not most days since I talked to you last because I'm on a time crunch for this one. So I will show a picture right here of what this looked like when I talked to you guys last. This is the Tudor Rose Biscornu by Heartstring Samplery. And this is a whip that I've had for forever. I started it on, when I started it? June 18th of 2022, so over a year ago, well over a year ago. Uh, and I didn't really have any plans to finish it until I signed up for the Jingle Ball that's being hosted by Lindy Stitches this year, uh, which is just in a week. So I decided that instead of starting the Biscornu for the Candy Cane Biscornu class that's being taught um, to talk about how to finish Biscornus, uh, which I've signed up for, I think I'm the Sunday morning session. I'll have to double check. But anyway, I have signed up for the Biscornu finishing class and instead of starting a whole new Biscornu, I decided to finish the one I had as an existing whip. However, that meant taking a project that had previously only had about 750 stitches and finishing the full 8,000 stitches um, in the span of about a month, which is pretty ambitious, but I'm happy to report that I got it done. So I will show this to you in halves. So this is the first half of the Biscornu, all finished. I stitched mine on a 36 count cream and sugar linen, oh say hello Fergus, uh, by Fiber on a Whim, one over two with a somewhat floss conversion. I'll actually pop that up on the screen. But like I said, this one stitched up so quickly. Not really quickly, I mean I worked on it a lot, but it, it was a good bit of stitching. So um, I think I had the center flower finished and some of these outlined and I finished all of those and did the 
red outlining there. So let me flip this around and I'll show you what the other half of the Biscornu looks like. Okay, this is the other half of the Biscornu. There is another one of those same center floral motifs called for to be here, but um, I was on time crunch and I have other things I need to work on. So I decided to omit that because it's gonna be the underside of it. So essentially these two squares um, you'll cut out a little bit of a margin and then you sew them together so that the points go in between. It's kind of hard to explain, but anyway, that is what that's going to look like. And I did just stitch my initials and the year over one, and that will just appear on one of the little corners, which I thought was a fun way to do initials for this piece. But yeah, I did about, I want to say about 6,500 stitches on this. Um, omitting the center flower saved me 1200 stitches. So that was nice. Um, but yeah, I did a lot on this and I'm really happy to have gotten it done in time for the jingle ball next Saturday. So in about a week, I will be fully finishing this with a class full of other people who have finished Christmas ones, but <laughs> that is what it is. Okay. And while we're on the subject of the jingle ball, let me show you my other jingle ball project. So when I sign up for the Jingle Ball, I sign up for two classes. I'm going to be taking the Biscornu class and the uh, tree finishing class from Hello from Liz Matthews. You guys know how much I love Liz. And uh, as much as I love the Christmas tree that she designed, I really have had my eye on this other tree of hers for forever. But I never had like the motivation to start it or the, like a reason to get it started. Uh, and this is a tree that I could have up all year round. So I decided to, instead of stitching the one for the class, um, stitch this one. <laughs> so yay. <laughs> uh, however, it has really created quite the um, rush job for me. So <laughs> this is what the cover image looks like. I started this on November 11th of 2023. And this is what I've gotten done. So this is on a 36 count limited edition coloring cotton linen. If you've been following me for a while, this is the same linen, the other half of the piece that I used for Miss Bingley's library by Plum Street Samplers uh, because I knew white would show up really well on it. And yeah, so this is Swan Tree. I love it. Now, the difficult thing about this chart is when you buy it, it is actually a sampler, um, but according to Liz, if you use these stars that are on the chart here, here, and here, you can actually ignore a good bit of the stitching that goes around the edge, but it does mean that I'm not quite sure how much actual stitching I have left on this, which is a little bit difficult when I am running up um, on a week to get this finished. Um, so according to the chart, the total number of stitches is 6,400. And I am currently sitting at Sorry, I'm currently sitting at about 2,000 stitches finished. So by my estimate, I think I've got another 2,000 stitches left. Um, it's the majority of the water and fish underneath the swan that I'm concerned about. These tree branches, I just have to finish out the other kind of half of the triangle. I think I've left myself enough of a stitched margin around the piece so that when I make the tree, it will be enclosed in the seam without doing too much extra stitching. That's kind of been the guide with this one, but uh, I was able to stitch the swan in hand, which made it go a good bit faster. Um, I think I have worked on this for four days. So 2000 stitches in four days is not bad. Uh, I am gonna have to go kind of monogamous on this for the next week to get it done before Saturday's class. I know that the Jingle Ball classes are recorded and I could finish this later, but I really would like to finish it live with the class on camera because that's kind of the benefit of, you know, attending the class and getting to ask questions as you go. Uh, but yeah, that is the Swan Tree by Hello from Liz Matthews. I am in love with it. I think the fabric is perfect. The color palette is beautiful. See where I put my floss ring? Let me show you that. This is my floss ring of the Call 4 DMC. It's also charted in weeks, I think, but I just used DMC because I had it all in my stash. It's a beautiful color palette. I cannot wait to do the water. 
I swear, DMC 930, this dark blue is one of my favorite colors. It's just so pretty. So that's Swan Tree by Liz Matthews. Very excited. Wish me luck on getting that um, into a finish. Okay, I have two other starts that I wanna share with you guys that I've done in the last couple of weeks. The first one is The Woodpecker by Cottage Garden Samplings. I started this with my friend Marjorie, Marjorie Maid, and Caitlin of Cross Stitch Kate. Um, I started it on Caitlin's birthday, so happy belated birthday, Caitlin. And uh, it's so beautiful. Look at this floss ring. I am missing one color on it, uh, or a couple colors actually, because I color completed a few and I just took them off the ring when I finished them. Um, but I am in love with this. I started this on November 9th of 2023. Uh, and I'm stitching mine on a 40 count Legacy Linen by Picture This Plus, which is this gorgeous yellow. It's the same fabric that I used for my Little Brown Bat in the same series. This is part of the Year in the Woods series by Cottage Garden Samplings. And this is my favorite in the entire series, I think. I got a good, decent chunk of progress. I hope you can see that line of white stitching. Shows up a little bit better when it's next to all the dark colors. But finishing his little headpiece. Um, let me finish up a couple colors in the pattern. So I am sitting at, let's see, 772 stitches finished. So not a crazy amount of progress, but I only worked on him for two days. And I, I did get quite a bit done. So this one's got a total of 7,223 words 7,243 stitches so just a tiny little chunk I think I'm sitting at 10% finished so yay love him absolutely love him okay and the final project that I started over the last couple weeks is actually a restart um this is the first day of Christmas by hello from Liz Matthews I am doing this entire series on one ginormous piece of fabric with all the called for NPI silks. And I did the math and figured out that if I were to finish one of the samplers every two months, uh, with the exception of a couple being three months, like the bigger ones, I would have this series finished by the end of 2025, which by my calculation, the series will finish releasing in March of 2025. So that shouldn't put me too far off of um the finish so here are the first round of npi silks that i have collected and pre-cut i think this is enough to get me through the fourth day uh, sometimes different ones are added in different samplers different ones aren't used but this should get me through my first chunk which is the first couple months um, and I had previously started this on a 32 count linen and I was stitching the entire thing one over one, but that much over one stitching was not for me. I can do little chunks of it. So I decided to restart it on a 46 count cream and sugar linen by fiber on a whim. And this is what I've gotten done. This first sampler is about 7,000 stitches all together. And I have done 1218 so I got the entire width of it and I've started on all of these little pairs and um, I my goal is to have this whole first sampler finished by the end of December and going into January I'll start day two so I do have a good bit of work cut out for me on this one but um, I really only have three focus projects over the next month with the exception of finishing Swan Tree which hopefully I'll have that done before December. So I am pretty confident that I can get this done. I just need to sit down and focus on it. I am kind of wishing now that I maybe would have done a 36 count linen. I know it would have made it absolutely monstros monstrosity huge. Um, however, I would have been able to stitch it in hand and I can't stitch in hand very well on 46 count linen. So, it is what it is, but I've gotten a good chunk of progress. And I'm almost to where I was when I originally started this. So that's making me feel better. But my stitches are laying so much nicer on the 46 count linen than they were on the 32 count linen. And that honestly makes me so happy because this is going to be 
a lot of work, a huge heirloom piece, and I'd rather put in a little bit more work and do the over two counting um, just to make sure my stitches don't look lumpy and weird like they did on the other linen. And that's probably just me and um, how I was stitching on that 32 count linen. But this was one of my oldest whips before I started to restart it. Um, decided to restart it. I cannot talk today. This is why I'm bad at filming in the afternoons, okay? <laughs> but anyway, super love this piece. Cannot wait to get going on it and work on it through this Christmas season. And honestly, through the rest of 2025 because um, it's gonna have to be a pretty serious focus piece for me to get it done in that timeline. And I'm looking forward to the challenge. Okay, so as far as whips that I worked on since I last talked to you, the, the main one was Tudor Rose and I got that finished, but I did also work on my model stitch for Hello from Liz Matthews as well. This is a Buzz at Midnight. I am trying to get this done by uh, the beginning of January is my goal, um, which means this is going to be a pretty heavy focus piece for December for me. I've got the called for NPI silks on my cosmic pink Adam Heart thread hearts. Thread hearts are my favorite way to store fancy floss. This is what it looked like the last time you saw it. And this is what it looks like now. This is on a 36 count fiber on a whim linen. I cannot share the name with you yet, um, but Liz was nice enough to let me share my progress with you as I go. So uh, I've done quite a bit on this. This one is now, let me look it up. I've started using Notion to track my stitching and I'm loving it. The um, Stitching a T Notion template off of Gumroad is fantastic. It does take a little bit of getting used to. It's not necessarily um, the most intuitive user-friendly platform. I'm struggling with it a little bit, but um, she and Bindi Stitchy have made a video talking through it and it is extremely helpful. I highly recommend that if you do buy the template to make sure, make sure you're getting the most out of it. Uh, but luckily I have friends who use Notion, so I've been able to troubleshoot questions through them and I'm loving it as a tracking software for my stitching and my pattern stash and my floss stash and fabric stash, it tracks everything. It's great. So um, let's see. I am now sitting at about a thousand stitches finished on this out of a total of nine, almost 9,000. So I do have a good chunk of this that I need to get done over the next month, but it is beautiful. Honestly, the only thing that's holding me up is that I'm stitching at two over two on 36 and my stitches aren't laying perfect. And I am used to my stitches laying, not to like brag, but I do, my stitches do normally lay perfectly. They're not lumpy, they're even. And with the two over two, it's just a little tighter than I normally prefer, but I'm getting through it. I'm getting it done. So I just need to buckle down and get into it. The dark linen is a little challenging, but nothing that my fancy bin Q lamp cannot help me fix and a white pillow under my project. But getting this b skep, I think, um, finished will be a good majority of it. And once I'm done with that, I won't be doing as much like full coverage stitching. Um, so I am trying to knock that out first. And it is beautiful. These colors are great. This linen is gorgeous. I am so excited to be stitching a model stitch for Liz. And I hope she asked me to do another one, hopefully on a 40 count so I can stitch with one strand in the future. <laughs> but I love it. So um, this will be coming back out again in the next week. As soon as I finish Swan Tree, uh, I will work on that. And then as far as other focus projects for the next couple weeks for me, I want to finish Woodland Wonder by Blend In Place. This is my oldest whip currently um, and it's Christmassy and I just have to bead two trees and the border and it will be done. So I need to get that done before this Christmas season so I can get it framed and display it, which would be amazing. So that will be another quick focus project, but I think I could knock that out in a couple of days. Beading is just a little difficult because finding a frame that holds tension and fits the entire project is hard. 
And also it being on a 32 count linen, it is uh, tight with some of the beads having clusters and things like that. So that is that. The Days of Christmas and A Buzz at Midnight are like my three focus pieces for the next month. Um, as well as sprinkling in Christmas garden and all of those kinds of things. But we'll talk more Christmas stitching on my next floss too once I've started to dig into it and see what I'm really feeling this season and see what my time commitment looks like. Um, having to finish these other stitches that are just a little bit more pressing for me, um, more priority pieces for this season. So that's everything stitching wise. I do have a couple purchases and a couple plans, a couple of styles to talk about, and then we'll chat books for a second. So uh, first purchase was my Color and Cotton Fabric of the Month. This month I get the 40 count linen and the color is Harvest Wheat. It is beautiful. Their fabric club, club is just insane. Insane. So just a perfect like neutral fall lamb's wool kind of a color, kind of taupey gray brown love that then i do three skeins of their classic collection colors which is like their permanent collection which this month was fiesta which i need to get my friend marjorie some of these because it is pink and orange and she is such a pink and orange person that this color marjorie you need it girl and cam also probably needs some uh, then purple parrot which is this gorgeous vibrant purple and pickle, which is also a Marjorie color because I hate pickles, but Marjorie loves them. So anyway, those were the classic collection colors. And then I did three of the all colors, which are limited edition. I kind of wish I had gotten six limited edition colors this month because these are stunning. The first color circus ring, which is this most stunning, like muted terracotta brick color. Love that. Then um, trapeze, which is like an icy cool toned blue and peanut, which is like a taupey tan. I love these. I think they're so beautiful. This is like the best thread club to be in, in my opinion, and it's really affordable. So those were my six skeins of color and cotton. And then I made some needle minders. <laughs> so I bought some Taylor Swift inspired pins from, is it Magical by Marissa? I will find the link and put it in the description box, but she makes these enameled pins out of the Eras Tour and other Taylor Swift inspired ones. But these were the four that I purchased. So I did the green folklore dress, Midnight's, the Lavender Haze look, um, Enchanted, the Speak Now set with the Koi Fish guitar, and the surprise acoustic set with the guitar and the piano and the red outfit. And then my dad shaved the posts off of the enamel pins and I used some E6000 glue to glue on some magnets. So now they are ready to go as needle minders. So I made myself four Taylor Swift needle minders. So that was really fun and I cannot wait to use them. I already have projects in mind for them. One of them will be going on my Eras Tour Quaker, where I replaced uh, colors in a Quaker design with Eras Tour colors. But yeah, had to include my little bit of Swifty crafting. And finally, the last thing I wanted to talk about was an upcoming sal. So I'm starting this on Monday with a bunch of my stitchy friends. And this is Sarah Moon 1791 by Stitchy Box Samplers. This is a historical reproduction Quaker design that I am stitching with the Vicki Clayton silk conversion, which is stunning, that Vicki Clayton was kind enough to send to me for free, but it is so worth it. I bought so many Vicki Clayton silk packs. I cannot sing her praises enough. These silks are affordable and they're beautiful. And if you use Adam Hart thread hearts to put them on, the label that comes off of the bobbin sticks directly on there, which is great. So it keeps the dye lot information and all of that accessible on my thread drops. And then uh, once I use these longer extra pieces, everything will be all of the same cut. And the fabric that I landed on for this one is 40 count dirt track by Fox and Rabbit, which is the most insane color. 
it is so cool. And I think Megan is about to the Seattle Stitchers using the same conversion with the same fabric. <laughs> and um, Cam, my friend Cam the Stitcher, created a beautiful whimsy goth conversion that is very bright. And she's stitching it on a cool Atomic Ranch fabric. And I think my friend Marjorie is copying her. So um, that is a little bestie sale. It's gonna be hashtag Sarah Moon Sal if you'd like to join us. We're going to work on it for a couple days this week. Uh, probably honestly just one for me and then I'll have to get back to Swan Tree, but it's gonna be so much fun. And then after that, we're going to be stitching it on the full moon of every month. So it'll be our full moon bestie sal. And yeah, a lot of people have full moon projects that they do with their friends and we hadn't had one yet. So because Sarah Moon is in the title, we decided on this one. So I hope you'll join us for that. And that is everything stitchy related. So if you made it to this point in the video, let's see. Go ahead and leave me a bumblebee emoji because of a buzz at midnight. So leave me a bumblebee. Let me know what you're working on, what your holiday stitchy plans are, if you had a good Thanksgiving, or just say hi or just leave the emoji. I just love um, hearing from you guys. And it is really nice to know that someone has made it to this point in my videos. I know today's update was pretty fast, but... I don't have a lot to share because I've been pretty monogamous, which is weird for me. And I know that I just showed like six cross stitch projects, but I've shown more. Some of you have stuck with me, you know. So this is a pretty tame episode for me, considering I did do like 6,000 stitches on one project, which I normally rotate before I hit that threshold. Uh, but yeah, that is everything stitchy related. So I'm gonna talk about books for a quick second and then um, I will get out of here. Okay, so I don't remember the last time I talked to you guys about books. I know for a second there, I was going to record book videos separately and then I lost footage and I forgot to re-record and I lost track. So I'm getting back on track now. Um, so I'm not going to tell you about all the books I've read in the last little bit, mostly because I haven't read a book in a long time. I, it's been rough. <laughs> um, I need to get back to it because I have reading goals I'd like to hit at the end of the year and I've got a couple reading challenges I need to finish up and I'm going to get back into it. But I figured I'd tell you about a few highlights of books that I've read uh, in the last two or three months that I haven't told you about or I don't remember telling you about. So we're just going to go through like two or three if you're looking for fun reads. Uh, the first one that I read that I loved was My Roommate is a Vampire by Jenna Levine. This is about a woman in the present day who finds a really crazily cheap roommate ad and answers it. And she basically has to kind of teach her roommate about real life because he's been in a coma for a hundred years and just woke up. And of course he's a vampire, um, but she doesn't know it. <laughs> and so um, it's a really cute romance. Loved it. Very lighthearted. It's a good like slump buster of a book, I'd say. And I know it's definitely more of like an October vibe, but I really enjoyed it. And I think you would too, if you like books like mine. Again, if you'd like to follow me on Goodreads, that is a more current update of every book I'm reading, or you can go back and see uh, other books that I've read in the last few months and get kind of the lowdown of like my star rating and everything like that. So that is all there. I read Wayward by Amelia Hart. I really enjoyed this. This is definitely a more serious read, definitely more women's fiction. Um, lots of sisterhood and motherhood and womanhood themes. Um, and there are trigger warnings for that book, so make sure you go into it aware of what you're reading, but I very much enjoyed it. It's definitely a darker, more serious read. Takes a few more brain cells than like a qu cute, quirky romance, but I liked it. Morbidly Yours by Ivy Fairbanks was a five-star read for me. It was so good. It's about a woman who her husband has died and so she's trying to get a fresh start and she moves to Ireland and um, she's an animator and she moves in next to a mortician and he's Irish, she's Texan. The romance that develops is adorable, but it does go a little deeper into like their personal histories and their, uh, it's good. It's, go read it. It's on Kindle Unlimited as far as I know at least when I read it, and it was absolutely adorable. Five stars, go read it. It doesn't necessarily lend itself to an October vibe. I think 
it really wouldn't affect you reading it now if you were a mood stitcher and like you tended to read in the season. I think that one you could read year round. So good, I'll definitely be rereading it at some point. Then the next one that I wanna to talk to you guys about was The Hacienda by Isabel Cañas. This book was so good. It's like, it's supposed to be Rebecca meets Mexican Gothic and it follows a woman who moves into her new home um like her husband's family estate and she starts getting kind of haunted and so there's a lot of gaslighting but it's a historical fiction set in mexico in the 19th century it was so good i'm not a thriller or a horror reader but this had just enough thriller elements but it's also historical fiction and it just it worked for me i'm very excited to read more by her i have um the vampires of el norte which is like a post-Texas Revolution story um, and I am really excited to read it. Her writing is beautiful, it's lyrical, it's just scary enough that you're into it but not so scary that it like keeps you up at night and I'm a weenie when it comes to scary things. I loved it, loved it. So if you are not someone who really enjoys thrillers but you do like historical fiction, I definitely think this would be good for you. I know it's slightly out of season but it's so good so good. Then I read You Again by Kate Goldbeck. This is a gender-bent modern retelling of When Harry Met Sally, which is one of my favorite movies. I love it. And it was so cute, so good, so entertaining. Um, it's got a lot of will they, won't they, and so good. So <laughs> the Sally character is the guy in this one, and the uh, Harry character is the girl but it's like when Harry met Sally, if it was modern, if they had cell phones, and also if their jobs and their careers were also kind of in the toilet, the way their romances are in the movie. Um, because in the movie, you don't really hear a lot about Sally or Harry's jobs. Um, they just kind of have them. But if their jobs were also a nightmare and failing, what would that look like? So good. So good. Go read it. Go read it now. <laughs> so that is definitely like perfect for this like December, October, October, November into December time period where it's like still fall. So good. Go read it. Um, and then I just, just finished One Dark Window by Rachel Gillig. This is a young adult, but not, I wouldn't give this to your teenager. There are some steamy scenes, not like overtly steamy, but definitely more than like I would consider in a YA book. Uh, but this follows a woman who has an evil spirit in her head and um, children get infections and when you get infections you get magic. The magic comes with a cost and it's lots of intrigue and politics and I cannot wait to read book two. I very much enjoyed this one. Highly recommend it. I'm doing a really bad job at explaining it but um, I think that's just because I was reading it when I was in a reading slump and it definitely didn't my slump didn't make me not like the book, but I do think there were parts of it that I wasn't super paying attention to and that hurt me in my reading of it. So it's definitely one that I will reread, I think um, maybe at the beginning of next year and finish out the series. I don't think I'm quite ready to finish the series now. I need something lighter to bust my slump, um, something that I am not paying as close attention to. Um, but I will say even being in a reading slump, I still enjoyed it. I just think I would have enjoyed it more if I would have been outside a reading slump, if that makes sense. So that's everything that I've read in the last few months that I think is worth talking about. I've got a few books lined up as slump busters. Right now I'm reading Butcher and Blackbird, which is a uh, romance between two serial killers, which is fun uh, that I'm reading for my alphabet book challenge to get the letter B. And yeah. That is it. I will let you guys know next time if I've found any more books, if I've gotten out of my reading slump. Wish me luck. If you have recommendations uh, for books to get me out of a reading slump, let me know down below. You guys know I love reading books from you guys' recommendations. I've read a few five stars this year that have been off of your recommendations. So thank you. <laughs> and I very much am looking forward to reading those. Um, particularly if you have a book that starts with the letter X, hit me up because I'm trying to fill, finish out a true alphabet challenge and I'm looking at reading some very bad X books if you guys don't 
have anything good. <laughs> I, I've covered Z, which was surprising, but X is, is harder actually. So that's everything. I hope that you guys had the best holiday week or just regular week if you're not um, celebrating Thanksgiving. But moving into this next month, work is going to get really busy for me, which means stitching is going to be my escape. And I've also got some pretty strict goals. So I'd love to hear if you guys have any stitchy goals, if you're joining any sales, if you have anything you're looking forward to, if you're going to the Jingle Ball or you're taking any of the classes that I'm taking, let me know. I'll see you there. And yeah, have a great rest of your night or whenever you are watching this. I love you all. Be sure to comment, let me know things, and I will see you next time. Bye.